not expecting anyone today. I'm going to be getting these bots in place. Oh, what's going on? What's up? What's up? What's up? I am working on updating the Discord room, the Musical Geniuses Discord. So just give me one moment. Gotta let the fam lamb know that I'm streaming. Boom, 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 boom. Let's see, where is the... That's what I'm looking for. I gotta get back into my channel. Boom, 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 boom. And there we go. Copyright address. This was supposed to be my video yesterday. But Mama Dukes was not having it. Right now she is relaxing. And I am going to be able to get this done at least. What's up everyone? Welcome to Toxic Hustle. My name is J. Chadrick Jeffrey. I am getting the bots upgraded because there's some great percentages that are happening on the market with the BitsCap bots. And I haven't really been focusing on them, but I um as the market cools sideways, um I'm gonna be talking and doing specific events based on these, based on my findings. So uh, let me hit refresh on this. Our current bots on KuCoin. I also have um, Gate.io, another server that. I'm now going after Pole Starter. Um, anything dealing with Polygon and the affiliate coins from Polygon, I'm starting to do research on those. So I think it's Polka Starter or Pole. No, no, it's not Pole. It's Pole. I don't know. But let me see. Hold on. Let me find out what this is. Give me a second. Oh, oh, oh. I just know I wanted it. Give me a second. Here we go. I think it is P O L S. Yep, Polka Starter. So Polka Starter is um decentralized the way your ideas raise capital. So yesterday and a couple for the last couple of days I've been discussing with y'all the the idea of realizing that this industry everything that you would need on the other like what we're using on the internet is going to decentralize so then you look at every business that's out there that's successful or every industry that's out there that's successful you look at the blockchain and then you say okay is there is it happening so are they just repurposing it that way? Or is there a functional version of that working, but we're just missing that this is the functional version of the way things work? And that is these things, like Porkestrata, I mean Starter, which is applications that are going to get funded to other platforms. So like the Polkadot platform, the Cardano platform, right? So like, uh, or... Uh, Binance smart chain, right? The Binance uh, smart chain starters. So I'm starting to be um, to look into the way, as I say, people are gonna raise capital. If we understand that what we're doing with blockchain is purchasing software companies, and we understand that we're purchasing software, and that underlying software has value, and that underlying software will potentially be the backbone to certain things happening until there's like an uh, we don't know what is going to be the lead company we don't know who is going to be the lead company we don't know what software is going to be number one what applic what what is going to be the application that businesses are all building with who does it in such a way where it's not uh, there's no uh, uh what is it boundaries to en boundary to entry Right? Who makes it easy? Who simplifies the process of getting to market? 
Because at the end of the day, all of this is hypothetical unless we can get to market. And if it takes us having to, to, having to overly repurpose our skill sets to do that, that's not going to make sense because the industry on the software development side, on the regular software development side, is going down to low code, no code. So we're not going to be programming forever. So how do we simplify that? Or how do we utilize the fact that we are getting into a low code strategy to then decentralize that and or use it in with decentralized assets? In other words, being oracles, right? Off chain data. How can you gather data, hold it, store it, earn on it or utilize it in an application to earn on? That's similarly what we're dealing with, right? So if you're looking at something like PokerStarter, you're looking at a company that is helping to start up other companies to work on there. So it's, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, incubator, so to speak. That's it, right? So what we're looking at is a new idea to incubators. And those are gonna all copy themselves, and they'll be, and when it, and then you're looking for like Cardano, Card Starter, right? You're looking for whatever's on Binance Chain, and you're looking for what's here. And these are going to be, and what do we look at that in the, when we look at these, what do we see in the real world for that? Well, those will be Indiegogo, right? New. Hold on, damn, wrong side. This side. New. So in our regular, I'm a developer, I want to build stuff, and I want to get money, you go to Indiegogo. And now with Indiegogo, you can get your software, your whatever you're trying to develop, develop. But since we're very focused in the blockchain, right? Well, since we're very focused, well, this is the same exact ideal. Now, I'll be looking at these, looking at what companies they're actually working with, and then also beginning to understand the decentralized DeFi pools. I want to begin to understand DeFi pooling because there's interest rates out there and liquidity is liquidity. And providing liquidity, this is what the robots are for, um, providing liquidity and especially automatic uh, market making, right? AMM, um, especially if you're able to earn. My goal, again, is to grow the earnings of the company. And you cannot not look at DeFi pools and figuring out the interest you can make in a DeFi pool. So... That is where the on our high risk portfolio, that is why I am now trading into it. I had wanted to grab some uh, coin games or excuse me, chain games. I wanted to grab some chain games and I found out it was on Gate.io. I went over there to grab that, had some extra capital and decided, let me go ahead and let something over there earn me some residuals. Now, I am changing the way that I run my bots. I'm looking towards setting up now for long-term trades than short-term. I want to see how this plays out for uh, a few days and see if this does anything. Um, what I've done is I've set it at a 2%, 2.98% on my robot um, with uh, on 12 grid lines. These are the lines you see here. So this is not going to pull the trigger as much, which may be good and or bad. I may not earn as much. So I'm trying to balance that out to see how these trade based off of, you know, seeing these sit for a couple of days. If these don't end up, hold on, I think my screen froze. Let me just make sure we're caught up. Hold on, I am buffering. 
This thing is lagging up. Give me one second, y'all. Let me just verify by swapping my screen. Let's see. Okay. There we go. Looks like it's now starting to get back in sync. All right, there we are. We're back in sync. All right, so I'm not gonna move the mouse as much. Um, let's go ahead and let me show you the bot. So yes, I have the poke, uh, the poke starter there. And I'm setting these at 298. I don't know if I'm going to sit there with that because, again, this thing has been not making any trades whatsoever. This will probably be when we hit Crypto Winter. I will go ahead and set my bots in this trade format so that we're just trading very deep pocketed pair moves or bounces. So we're just really floating into deeper pockets. But there's really doesn't seem to be enough volatility over there for me to trade this low. So you, I may have to think about that as well, right? Like if I'm looking at how much volume I have, 9,000, that's not going to get me the moves I need. As you can see, it's just trading in this small gap. It's not going all the way down to this level for it to trigger off a trade. But then again, because it's so stable, and maybe I'm at a floor, it may not go down. We're gonna, I'll leave it, because I don't know. I really don't know how I want to play on this one. I do know I want uh, my other trades to be running, but they're on bigger exchanges. This is a bigger exchange, and they're still not moving either. So I want to actually jump into the news and see what's going on, um, because there doesn't seem, it's almost like the, the market's frozen. And I want to see what what is going on in the news because let me see what we're doing with volume is volume. One second. Just wanna we've got high volatility going on. So there is, but it is looking like it's sideways. Go on the day. Okay, yeah, we've been floating. And we're still up for the day. We were down yesterday. We're up for the day. I don't know. It's like the mark. I guess we're just building our sideways. We're in an accumulation phase, which is fine. That's actually fine. So I don't think I'm going to be seeing any major news. Because I think this is just the last of this accumulation phase before the breakout. We know we have major calendar news, right? We know starting next week, we have things getting ready to announce for Ethereum um, on the 9th, which will be Wednesday. So Wednesday, we already have some news coming in. Oh, see, Polkadot? That, was, that, that also was, um, I know that there's other things getting ready to roll out for their infrastructure which will also allow for other releases of software to get um, rolled out ethereum ethereum v v chain theta yeah we have enough news coming out that makes it interesting i'm seeing safe moon be in other places my play for safe moon because i don't trust it yet or anything um, is as it gets on other exchanges. I remember wholeheartedly that BitConnect was outside on other exchanges as well. My play is that once it gets on a decent exchange, I'm going to go ahead and trade on the pair as a back end trade. Let me see if this is 
because I got buffering on my end. Internet is horrible today, and I'm and I'm paying for business lines. Like this is ridiculous. Give me one moment. Yeah, we're buffering hard. Okay. They don't want me to be great. So, what we're going to do is talk about, uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and get to the, the bots. I want to clean these up. I'm going to go ahead and get those done. I may have to move a few of these down. What I'm looking at is how far deep in the well are we? And should I position them down in case we get a drop? Because then we can just follow the drop and get the and catch the sideways bounce like that's what this was cat we caught a drop and then we hit a sideways bounce and you see this only did this much we still pulled extra percentages out so we are all even if you know people say oh it'd be better if you just bought and hold that's not always true because they don't take into consideration compounding right compounding interest and while you can buy a coin, hold a coin, compounding by taking what you make in interest, putting into something else, earning interest on that, putting that into something else, earning interest on that, especially when you can catch a 15% in two days, like, that's not a bad trade-off. You know, and then the reason why I like trading multiple pairs is that if I just stuck my money in one thing, how would I have caught this? I caught this looking for a pump off the side. That's how I caught this X CAD for 15%. So when you begin to divert, that's why I split up my payments into little bite-sized chunks. Right? That's the goal of this. My thought process was, okay, well, if I'm going to invest and how I'm going to invest, it can't be where if I can't do it at the level of, hey, first things first, I'm going to find my money in my own pocket. I'm going to take, you know, save up till I have, uh, you know, a little bit of, uh, of money from food I would have ate out or done this or done that. I save up some money. I put that to the side and then. I put it into the market. I earned some interest on it for a little bit. And then once I feel comfortable with a strategy, I then pivoted it over here. Once I had a little bit of uh, extra capital to pay for the server for a, f a few months, because I don't want to take any of the money that I'm putting in here to pull it right back out to then just pay for that. What I want to do is I made sure there was enough money to cover the bots out of pocket. So this way I'm paying out of pocket, but I'm compounding for two to three months. Now, when I'm now I can pay the hundred and twenty dollars out of the bill. If I'm already building it in a few weeks, right? Like this is seven days. That's why your starting capital, that's why how much you put in there. And that's also understanding that if you, you know, if you may need to take, even if you get a smaller bot where you say, okay, well, I'll get just the, a smaller bot. There's no problem with doing that. The only issue is, is that if you do get a smaller bot, you may get your bots turned off if you have too many transactions. Right. So I would pay to have the extra buffer to say I don't have to worry about transactions or how many transactions I do. Because this is a transaction game. I mean, look at this. One hundred and twenty five transactions just to get that. Seventy five transactions to get that. Eighty five transactions to get that. So you know, you look three hundred and eight, like especially the longer your bot goes, three hundred and eighty four to get that. I go through transactions and I showed that in the um, in one of the, the training videos for the bot. In fact, I showed it in the bot video. Link is in the description. But the intro to crypto bots, I show you in that video exactly how I set up one of these bots. 
and it runs with a thousand on it. And I'm noticing, I'm like, I'm looking at it, I'm like, okay, well, if I only had a thousand dollars, I put a thousand dollars on there. Well, how do I generate my capital? Right? How do I generate my capital enough to pay for it? How does it pay, how does it pay for itself? Or do I have to factor in that I have to pay for my bot for a while? And I need to probably add more funds to it to get it to a plane point where it can generate enough income to pay for itself or with what we're doing in fact i need to uh, go ahead and look at the let me look at my coinbase bot real quick because that one has actually been doing good percentages this week which is crazy because if you look at the kucoin one that usually is my high percentage uh runners right and this is seven days so these are typically my high percentage, and we're doing high percentages, but our Coinbase account right now is just crushing it. Lower investment, higher, uh, and not even like a crazy high interest rate on the day, which is insane. So it's like, you know, we're but I think the coins themselves have just... Yeah, see, the percentage change in the coin themselves have just pumped. So here it is. Multiple coins have run, and we have earned, if you can see, we got 3% here, but it still did 7, right? So you catch a wave, and with when it plays sideways, so like you'll, the reason why this, this happens, like uh, this one, right? The reason why this happens, and look at this. It only does a 1%, but we did 5%. This is why it happens. It plays sideways. That's the reason why I'm focused on this training right now is again, when we get to, I want y'all to get comfortable seeing this over and over. Yes, it's repetitive, but it's the only way that I, I don't think y'all get how long this is, how many years this run is. This is called sideways, boring and sideways, boring and sideways. Look at this. This is a this is a short version of a boring sideways pattern. The bot was started here and it just played sideways. What if this was a year? Yeah, I caught a couple rips and rips, but you see you make more not from holding, you made more from the sideways play. And that's what being a liquidity provider provides you. I'm not I I I get all these coins, they do things, yay, they may help my business, all right, hooray. But I'm not beat on worrying about that right now. I've got to worry about what my bot profit is on the week, or the, right now, as you see, 14 days. And that's why these numbers look crazy like this. That's what it is. That's what it is. It's got the rip, and it's also the fact that this is a 14-day play. Again, I want to extend leaving the bots alone. I need to get to a place where the bots can trade and I'm not chasing them. And that also means how much funds do I have and how wide is my window of trade. So what I'm going to start getting ready to do is as we're gearing to go into um, this pump cycle, I'm starting to get all my bots queued up for 2% and higher, closer to 3%. That's the 298 mark. So as I turn these bots off, you'll see this one's already started, right? 298, um, it did eight trades. This one is 198. So we're doing less trades. I don't know. We'll have to just test. I have, I'm still in the early phases of this. So that's kind of why I'm looking at the bots now to see where we are, but it's look like right now. There's, there's no reason to move any of these bots right now, which is a good thing. Like we're playing sideways and we're playing to the top and the market isn't seemingly in a depressed state. Let's look at the news. Let's get into the news because like this, it's almost as if this market is boring today. Which is good for us. Bots play sideways. 
Let me um, pull up that window over here. I see you. And get over to the news. Did I pull anything new since the gold? Okay. Oh, yes. What did I tell y'all yesterday? I told you that... You hurt... Elon's actions hurt individuals. Right? There's people's livelihoods. There's people put putting the like they chase after this chasing their elon messiah right and they the now they pump him up as he's helping the space he's helping the space he's helping the space but then when he starts doing his antics now you start seeing exactly the temperament of the individual and how he emotionally eqs you have to look at how it affects your business, right? And how it affects people's life. Like when you're in business, it's not just about business. It's also about people's livelihoods because if I'm a business owner, why I'm doing my business without employees is because I have to. Because I can't guarantee I can pay somebody 40 hours a week. I can't guarantee that right now. And I also can't give nobody opium. I can't say, hey, you know, I'm going to have some contracts. I hope you can keep this time available for me. No, I can't. I can't waste people's time. Like, people got lives. Like, last year, after this whole thing started off, I had people that I was going to work with. People got sick. People had to work. People needed to meet money. And I'm sitting there with hoping. Oh, I'm hoping I can keep that. And I'm losing, I'm losing contracts and clients. Right? Because when you become a caregiver, it changes your life. My life ain't mine. It's no different than having a child. Your life ain't yours. And it doesn't matter how many hours of the day I have if they're, you know, I have to take care of a parent. So you, you so if I'm relying on the market by the market alone, which is why I pivoted before this whole crazy crap started and started focusing the way I'm focusing is because I understand this market. I've done this cycle already. I've been here. I understand that the, look, the only thing you can do is understand that time rolled backwards. We are back here in January when the Mar January December of last year, January e yep, January, right? Let's go on the week. So even yeah, so literally we're back in time. Between January and December when it was popping in here, right? Where December was up here, it was in the same window. Same window we see here. Same window we see right uh, here. Right? Same window. Right here, sorry. Right in this zone. This whole zone is where we're playing. So basically, we've gone back in time. If you could have gone back in time and grabbed the asset while it's in this state, would you, knowing where it's been all the way up here, would you grab some now or grab some more now? Now, I am holding out and I'm looking, I'm making sure, but I'm also not going to not pull the trigger this week on grabbing some more at this price. I can't. Like, this thing can break and it could break fast and news is starting to come out on the 9th. So, and like, actually, I may actually pull the trigger today. Because Monday, I'm not going to, let's not even be cute. Monday could run up tremendously. And this might be the only low we get. So, after this, yeah, I already know what I'm doing after this video. So, I'm looking at it. Let me look at the day. I'm going to make it, I'm going to make the choice right now, right? On the three day, three day, yep. Yeah. Yep. All right. So we're converging a bit on the day. We still got a little bit of spread happening. Of course, we're still below this 200, but we've got some sentiment and we're going on the MACD. We look to cross over, but we are showing a little bit of a, a convergence here. But I have a sharp breakout on the wheel, like sharp bounce off the sharp rejection off the red. So on the day i'm liking it let's go to 12 hours let's break it down convergence we're starting to have some breakout so yeah there was some negative we were positive for a while 
we went under negative sentiment, but we're starting to break out of it and we might actually bounce back out. So it looks like even on the time we have now, let me break it down to 30 minutes and just see if we've already broke. Yep, we've already broke through. Okay, so I'm seeing positive sentiment in the market trickling into the day. And if it can, I see that's where that sharp break is happening on the willy because of what's happening in the microcosm of the day. If I break it into the three day, we're still in negative sentiment, but we are starting to converge. If I look on the week, uh, we are still in negative, but like I said, we, we know what we see on in the, the shorter timelines. Uh, of course, we just came out of extreme negative sentiment, so we can't do too much looking at, you know, at where we currently are. Any further, we know we're in negative, right? We've we have crossed into this red, we've broken into a red, but if we just stay there, we're only gonna be negative. We're only gonna think negative. If we look on the day, we see some positive. And like I said, if we break it down into 30 minute increments, we're, we've already begun breaking back into positive cycles. Let's even go further down and go into 10 minutes. See? Breaking into positive cycles. This is snitzeling down. Let me just make sure by going into, let's do the 15 minute window. And let's do the one minute window. All right, well, we are in some negative sentiment right now. We are in a little bit of a downtrend. But like I said, we'll see. I'm gonna go through the news, see if there's anything negative in the news and let that play it out. But back to this story with Elon, you, you, he was playing with people's lives, livelihoods, their finances, and anonymous, the hacking culture that that will come at you for the dum dum, had given him a, a pass, had left him be, but now, yeah, you mess with people's lives. There's people that are that have that that have ruined their 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 net worth is blown because of his antics. And they have found and they're starting to come at him. So, and as we see that, again, positive, that's why I said we're starting to, we're starting to see a rain in on Elon, right? With Anonymous getting ready to, once they start triggering, I don't think we're going to start hearing his mouth too much. That's where I'm looking at bull cycle getting ready to go. That's why I'm looking at pulling the trigger to getting into the market now, because I'm watching the tech from the back end. El Salvador will adopt Bitcoin as legal tender. So again, I've got a, I got a, I got, I got no other way to say it. I got a muzzle potentially going on Elon, on, on on Mr. Doge. I got a muzzle getting ready to go on the Doge. Um, as far as not just not Doge coin, but actually just on him because there's actually some good news for Doge, um, and Doge holders, right? Uh, I need to potentially go ahead and get into the game now because now that there's going to have some business use cases and there's going to be cross-chaining, there could be some, you know, Doge starter, all these other things can end up happening, what we're talking about um, with the Copoca starter, right? Um, but all El Salvador getting ready to, to adopt it as its currency because its own internal finances are deflate, are, 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 are like getting deflated. Just like our dollar is. For every print that happens, our bills are getting pressed down. And when you go to the supermarket, it's costing you more and more money. The dollar is the dollar is the dollar, but it's backed by nothing right now. What is our gross national product? What do we sell? What are we digging out of the... Are we in oil? Are we big sellers of gold? No, we got media products, data products, tech companies. And some of our tech companies are, are aging, not aging well. They ain't got that melanin. So we've got to look at this as an opportunity to see what tech is, what the tech's doing. Understand that commerce is commerce. I, I lived through the last recession in Second Life. Doing virtual clothing. And it wasn't much. It was $500, but I was living in, in, in Macon. 
So, it, you know, it was easier for me to do that because I was living with folks. But you can't live like, like that. You can't live like that. And to be able to get a livable wage is what I was looking at and what I've been fighting for for years. But if it was, we had to wait till software was able to be funded by people. And you could actually work for the company, make money doing things with the company, and get some shares in the company, right? Well, we have a new way of doing that. It's called blockchain. The old way of doing it is gone. It don't work no more. It's look, I've walked into you know how you don't know how it feels to be the street kid. Wearing, you know, army jacket lines, smoking my gritchy. Cut that all out. Because now I'm into computers and I am have to, you know, get into these offices. It means I got to throw on a suit. To go into these buildings thinking all these educated brown folk are going to be there. And I'm the only guy in the room. And I'm the guy that didn't go to college. I'm the guy that just started using YouTube as research material. Started studying from all these people teaching all this tech. Giving me practicum because at least they're doing it now. Here's how I'm making money right now. Not some professor who's trying to give me opinionated foresight at what the market is. By the time you got those books pressed, whatever that book pressed up as a business model was already over. Tech moves like that. So... Bitcoin servers, servers being maintained by people who get paid to maintain them remotely. Oh my God, what a concept. What, we didn't have businesses where people were maintaining servers and they were all now unemployed? You know, all these IT people that were laid off because you went to the cloud? And now you want to say, oh, it's a the, 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 the system it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make sense right now to you. But he's already, whoever coded this or whatever coded this or whomever let this loose, knew what was going to get. It was just the idea. You understand that you don't have to use any of the code. You can now come up with new consensus algorithms. And spin them up to do, you don't need one line of Bitcoin to now think about consensus, consensus uh, and to have a decentralized autonomous organizations. Like all of a sudden we can have conversations we couldn't have had before. Like I can walk into to, to the projects, right? And I can walk into a project building in New York to a kid who's in a building that ha he has internet access right? Because he figured out how to hook things up in his building and he has some software that's dope and I can have the conversation of investment. You, you see what I mean? Why I'm doing this is because I'm expecting to have more conversations about investments. As a brown man, I know my brothers and sisters and people of all pronouns have a strength of quality and a dignity of character that allows them to be able to see through pain. Being a pain-stricken people. And as such, I give unto Caesars what's his. It's called taxes. I create corporations or fictitious structures, right? And then I'll buy my cars in them and I'll make sure I'm doing business. If I go in the car and I record in the car and I put that out and it earns me income in some form of fashion or visibility to my media brand, because I understand media is my gross domestic and national product, you know, ever since back in the reality shows were popping off, you know, MTV type thing. We already figured out the jugs, man. We understand is an entertainment business. 
that as a radio station, your premise to us was the fact that you had ears. Well, Spotify, Spotify has me. Radio, quote unquote, air quotes, because you can't see me yet. Right? Radio has ears. Spotify has more ears in radio. And then it's only about how many people can find you on digital constructs that can search up your name and Spotify be the search result. Twitter, tragic, Spotify. And they always want to change my, my spell, my name, but my name keeps spreading and I get getting brain. Come on now, stop it. I'm just going to make you spell my name, spell my name. Right? That's my business and now I'm growing it. But how I'm doing it is my jugs is I'm not trying to sell music because I understand my music needs to earn revenue long term so if i want to become my own label for myself i figured well if i become my own label then why can't everybody else become their own fucking label too why can't you put your money aside and earn interest on it and why and i can do that without having some big paywall to tell you here it's an easy play go to cd baby pay one time they put you in multiple streaming places, pay you out via PayPal, Coinbase accepts PayPal, put it into an interest-bearing account on PayPal, on Coinbase, getting yourself 6%. Or 5%. Or 2% if you just want to keep it pegged to a stable coin because you don't want to deal with fluctuations of the currency. Though, again, if you believe in the digital market and you think you're going to be selling more digital products, then holding the other digital assets shouldn't be an issue. If I know I'm going to be in virtual worlds that are going to have video gamers potentially playing for crypto, which we'll be talking about that in the news. We already kind of have talked about that. But let's go ahead and, and, and do this up. Wait, let me see. Where is it at? Is it towards the bottom? No, but hold on. I'm going to pull this up. I'm going to pull this news up, which would be the fact that Grand Theft Auto, GTA 6, Bitcoin, right? Let's do that search right now. Rumored to have a Bitcoin-like cryptocurrency in game. Now, good people... Let me explain something very simple. Bitcoin is a machine that has everything in it. Typically, you can have a regular bit, let's say not the ASICs, but let's just say a Bitcoin miner you can build. You build a machine, it has every component in there that you could use to make beats with every component in there uh, you know the motherboard you just get a regular motherboard you get to your hard drive you get your you got your internet you have your video cards whatever right and basically your your same music machine can mine cryptocurrency won't be much but it can mine cryptocurrency okay so now understand that we're talking about xbox playstation new new systems and these systems are going to get phased out. Soon, that ain't going to matter because the hardware wars will be over. Every render of a game will be rendered in cloud. Every person will be able to watch in game any games. And those games that are being played will also be able to be bet on. We are going into a new revolution where your private gaming isn't going to be game. Having a hardware to yourself is, is going to be pretty much a thing of the past. You're going to log into game on anything because it's going to be able to be rendered in the cloud as a hardware acceleration. 
as well as you could have boxes in your own home that could help with your own internal caching for your own rendering. But buying a full-fledged system for yourself in the future, probably not going to be a thing. And if I have a machine, or if I do have a machine, right, like this, right now, and it has hardware, and some of that backline hardware, I could write a piece of software that could validate transactions and be a slight blockchain for my back end of my software. So every time you load it up, you actually also load some type of validation, rendering, whatever for the back end of the whole network. All of a sudden, the network effect is going to be extreme. Right. So you're going to now see them begin to train the world of cryptocurrency through video games. And through that, once it goes online, whatever GTA coin that comes out of this thing will be the first premise of the first shot across the bow of a major, major gaming franchise pivoting over to cryptocurrency business format. Does that mean you would, I, I told you, I, I don't know, no, I didn't tell you, but I've told my friends. My entire premise is I've always wanted to be in Grand Theft Auto. Have music in there, have fashion in there. Like I wanted my stuff in the game. That's a world that takes time to get into. A world that takes a lot of who you know, what you know. And just to be really skilled at just that real single solid thing of being a great art artist and 3D designer, right? Modeler. So for me, I'm, I'm great at seeing patterns and designs and, and throwing things up. But I'm not sculpting and modeling, right? I, that's just not my thing. I don't have the attention span for that. No, because I'm going to want to jump into something else that does something else. Right? I, I love jumping around. So, like I said, this, this right here begins the entire premise of what happens when you can put your music in a game and it earns. What happens when this becomes a virtual world that's open for business? That says, come in here, make your designs, open a shop, buy land, open casinos. Y you get it? That this is this is the new second life. The next version of this becomes the new second life. My business, what I'm prepping for, is how to take my digital earnings from all of these virtual worlds and throw them into a bot and earn long-term percentages. And the ones I'm seeing on Coinbase, long-term, happy. If you mean to tell me that, you know, we're looking at not 15 days consistently, but if this was consistently all channeled around the same timeline, you're looking at close to 30% a month. Who, who, who can get, what bank account can get that for you? And what can you do with adding more revenue to your investments? Especially when you're earning your revenue from a virtual world. So my goal when I, I tell you about uh, these opportunities is to get you to start thinking and changing your mind state and understanding the multi-tiered level that you have to do with your thinking about a digital business. You've got to be granular with it. And it's crazy that we have to think that way. Like every world is a business. Just like, okay, every program you make beats with is its own, you have to, it has its own nuance. 
right? Or every social network you are on, right? That's a better way, right? Social network that you're on. When you're on Facebook, there's a certain way you, if you want to be effective, there's a certain way you've got to talk in Facebook. And there's a certain, if you really want to be successful there, you've got to focus your attention there. Like, I'm not successful on any social media platforms because they don't hold my attention and I don't care. Right? For me, it's about building um, uh, community. It's always been that way. But the Facebook groups, you know, I saw their hustle. I saw their hustle was, you want me to pay for everything. And I have no real control over you know, my, my page. If you want to shut it off, you shut it off. The same thing that can be said with Discord, right? A person like, if it's not my Discord, that if, if I get booted, I get booted. I'm basically blocked out, right? Or if I do have a Discord and Discord doesn't like what I'm doing, well, Discord can ban me, right? Same thing. So even how I talk, I have to be very levied on my conversation because I realize that I can be censured for just being truthful. And truth hurts. The way we've been doing business is flawed, has been flawed, and this entire United States corporation is a Ponzi scheme. Plain and simple. The American dream has been deferred for multiple years, and they keep getting the people that come in to try to bring in some type of push for a new idea they need fresh ideas because the current infrastructure won't let the residents actually do things to change and fix the problem. Well, now they don't have enough cash flow to keep up their little shuffled Ponzi game. And what they got to do is keep printing money while they try to figure it out and while they try to lock this down. And at the same time, this industry is going to flip on its head and every generation, something's gonna come to flip it on its head. And this internet was for me, what, what flipped it for me, how I got into corporate buildings was because I used the internet as a hack, as a patch to get in. Because who can outwork me knowing a piece of software if I'll learn it over the weekend before you even pick up a quote unquote book to do it, scholarly person. I'll just figure it out. I'll bang away at it until I just start, bang, you know, getting my work done. Or because I'm always, I, I, when you go to, even if you work for a company, please realize something that you don't work for nobody. You're self-employed. If you've read Rich Dad Poor Dad, that's exactly what he tells you. I understood that innately. Then, as a truth, that you can be fired at any damn time. When I work at, at, at Citibank Private Bank, the private bank is where my the bank, uh, in the customers we had had to have a net uh, net worth of five million dollars and above. That's the private bank. We are all at the consumer bank, right? The retail bank. What they call you a retail investor? Yeah, that's a slap in the face. Like you're not that important. You're not a private sector person. The private sector is more important. Isn't that how you've always felt? That businesses and everything else is more important? Because they are. The flags that fly for a corporation are no different than the pirate's flag. And you fly no flag. You have no crest. But you want value. We've been marching for how long? We've had massacres for how long? When are we going to wisen up to the fact that if you want change, you might need to start flying flags again? Get it, pirates? Oh, pirates, yes, they rabbi. So lie to the merchant ship. Somebody put it in Discord. I'm just going to flash it for y'all. I want to say what's up um, to uh, but, but, but I am Malachi for this image of all the pirate flags up and down the coast. This is Louisiana. All the pirate flags 
Oh, pirates, yes, they rabbi, sold I to the merchant ship. Many thought that they took I from a bottomless pit, you know, like called Africa. But my head was made strong by the edge of the almighty, the double-edged tongue. Our words, our mouth, telling truths. Because in, in Deuteronomy, the chosen people, there's no way to be you, that you're going to be redeemed. Read your Deuteronomy if you're into the Bible so much. Read Deuteronomy. You're not redeemed. They can't be redeemed. You've already been redeemed. You've already been chosen as a people. It's just a matter of you starting to, you know, start doing some a little bit more homework. Digging a little bit. Get into that 3 a.m. room and scroll up. Yeah, I, I, yeah, my data just all of a sudden dropped. That's why I did it quick. That's why I did it quick. I figured my, my internet connection would drop for a quick second, and it did. All right, so let's look at the markets, right? Bitcoin investment experiment yields jaw-dropping 13. 15,000% in returns. Really? MIT Bitcoin project offered every undergrad. Oh, wow, really? It was an MIT project. Hmm. I'll look into that a little later. I don't know what that is, but we'll see. Uh, FinTech startup Chipper Cash raises. So, yeah. We're going to see a lot of nations begin to roll out their tech because, again, how can you, there's no blocking the fact that you can get funding for launching a coin and that funding can now you, you can use to pay for the software you want to develop. And it'd be great if you developed a portion of the software up front before you ever launched the token. And if you do that, now you have proof of concept. People can actually work it. And now they're like, okay, I'll invest and buy your token when it goes live because it's practical now. See, we don't have to wait. We shouldn't have to wait now another four years for practicality for businesses. They're all rolling out now. That's why I'm not jumping on any new coins that I got new, new, that ain't rolling out till next cycle. When this thing crashes back down, they'll be back down to these prices again. I'm cool. I'll focus. Keep focus on your focus. Uh, new crypto for a new all season. We'll see. Bitcoin sell-offs are deliberate. Yep. Institutional buying. Yep. Uh, that is institutional manipulation. We already talked about that. We know that. He, uh, I need to look at this. I want to see what his... Uh, I actually want to pocket watch Mark Cuban for infrastructure plays. So um, you see the title. Mark Cuban now owns over 100 altcoins. You can... Clearly put that into Google. It'll show up so you can pocket watch his wallet as well. Uh, East Salvador's present, uh, president, uh, Nahib Bukele, I'm sorry if I'm, I'm butchering your name, plans to declare Bitcoin legal tender next week. Next week. Next, do you under, like, I don't even think we understand the statement that's being made right now. Uh, El Salvador, a whole place, a whole place that got a whole flag, just said, you know what? Screw the central bank. Our legal tender is now going to be Bitcoin. Like, I don't think y'all get the fact that the, the money printers, the brick, the ding, 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 printing they're doing does it matter when we have no jobs? I've shown y'all already. Like, if you follow me and you're listening to my rants, then you understand that we are in the midst of one of the largest occupational drop-offs in history. Because lemming work or grudge work or monotonous Human labor in the office force is muerto, dead. Why do I need you to manually move a mouse to do something or send an email or to reply to a customer when I can do that myself? Muerto. 
Why should I drive you? Why should I pay for, again, I, I told people when they used to drive with me back and forth to work when I was working at Canon. And I was sitting there, you know, this is the dumbest thing in the world. And it was Canon. It was me working in Long Island that changed everything for me about the working world. Because here it is, I couldn't afford a car. I had my own place. I have a quote unquote good job. I'm making over 50,000 a year and I'm barely surviving. And I had to now go all the way out to Long Island, deeper into Long Island because they, they moved headquarters, right? So now I gotta move out there and I have to now either get a car because everybody was leaving the company corporate um the the corporate um the 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 way people felt working there was they felt unappreciated and that's also the cult the 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 work was a japanese cuz I was working at Canon it's a japanese company that's the culture work crazy hours for a little bit of little bit of scratch, crazy hours, a little bit of scratch. That's the culture. I lived in Japan. They have napping pods. It's the culture. You've got to wait till you got crazy grades in your head before your first promotion. Unless you just are, are like you you just you're organizing everything for the the head chief, making it so that he don't even work. Right. So you got to understand that the, 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 the business model that we've been pre-programmed to think worked has been failing for years. None of them finished school. Bill Gates didn't finish college. Steve Jobs dropped the hell out. He was has been walking around on campus causing problems, hacking things, hacking pay phones. With Captain Flute whistles <laughs> to get free calls to call the freaking Pope. Like, that's the type of, of, of mentality these guys have. Like, you don't understand the pirates. He flew a pirate flag. The reason why it's called Pirates of Silicon Valley and the reason why I keep harping on that damn movie and why I said it's changed me, it's words connect, words connect. When I finally figured out that Bob Marley was telling us that we were being sold by pirates, and that we were already here and we were just being shuffled around. I got it. Then everything made sense. The red beard, the black beard, the Blackfoot Indians, the everything made sense. When everybody's great great grandmother said that they were native tribesmen. Even in my own family. And then to find my country in a book and it's called Antigo instead of Antigua, which lets me know I'm, and, and then I see my, fle my feathers like your feathers, right? We all have dancing feathers. Look at our Calypso, look at our carnivals. We're still dancing feathers. All of us. And we all wanna be, as MG says, cute and clamorous about the fact that we're all dancing feathers. And then I'm looking crazy when I'm saying I want my feathers back and I start asking the universe for it and I start getting it. And not only that, it changes my whole perception of everything else because I started getting my feathers. And not only did I get started getting my feathers, I started being able to feel comfortable in, in, in seeing my nation for what it is. I hurt people who have been bow guarded on like, you know, the whole Plymouth Rock landed on us. like. Think about what's being said when he said that. We didn't land on Plymouth Rock. Plymouth Rock landed on us. That means who was here already? Blackfoot Indian, Cherokee. Indigenous. We've got to really be thinking about the fact that that scheme, that Ponzi, that one's over. What else we got? What else we got? How are you going to make... You got to flip ends, right? You got to still pay them bills or they're going to evict you, right? You know the stays of evictions are already... Like some people, that they've already been evicted. 
They're already out on these streets. People have videos counting down the evictions. But people don't want to go to work. Oh, no, people don't want to work for that little bit of scratch no more, especially since they already know it's a dummy mission. If I go to a restaurant, you don't think the ro those robots are going to come take over that crap? Stop it. It's coming. It's already here. And it just makes more damn sense. Our brains are supposed to be doing much more than what they're currently doing. The problems we've got to fix because of, of, of corporate corruption? Look, th th if you say that these are your lands, then it doesn't change the fact that these are your lands. And you can sit there and pile a trick with them all day. Or you can start creating the revenue for your own lobbies, plural. Because lobbies, plural, have weight. Because they'll have corporate flags. Because pirates. Get it? Toxic plunder, plunder. Yeah, I get it. Let's keep moving. Here's what's next. Oh, so this is big. I want to put that in. Um, I want to. I want, and we want to mark that as red. You gotta. That is important. That's huge because other countries are going to start doing this. This country has already said, and there's a video, and I will find it. There's a video where a senator was just at a conference saying that we need to underline our economy with Bitcoin. You can go look for it. I'll try to find it. So, it's coming. However, everybody wants to feel that this spooky mystery stuff, no. Servers are being maintained remotely now. You get paid to maintain hardware remotely. It's called the Internet of Things. Things are going to need to be managed. You're going to be managing things. You'll get paid for your services in keeping those things managed. Put up new hardware. Switch and pivot over to this model now. Switch and pivot over to this model. Make sure this upgrade gets handled effectively over all your things. If not, here's how you troubleshoot and fix those remotely. We're not going to do it centralized no more. The global computer, the world computer, everybody's saying it, guys. World computer means all of the other boxes will now be drone boxes. And they've already been drones. You've been the one controlling them. Well, now they'll be controlled by something else to generate income for you. And you'll just buy more things that have more hookups for you to earn more revenue in your home. So your internet of things will be internet of things that earn for you at least. Because I don't know what else they got. Unless you can tell me. When all the Uber and Lyft drivers are replaced by automated cars. Huh? When we're no longer even driving cars and the cars are flying and you no longer need to get on an, and you go to an airport. What's the airport going to be like when nobody needs to go? What happens when there's a, 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 a underground bullet tube that sends you across to California in three hours? Again, what happens when you don't need to fly? This world will change. The digital thing that they're creating is going to manifest itself. We really don't have much choice in that. It's been written. It's going to be here. How you stay out of the way is up to you. That, you notice what I'll say one more time. How you stay out of the way is up to you. Capital, the digits, the fiat, whatever that fiat may be, will be digital. How much digital O's do you have and are they convertible into your 
global currency or country's quote unquote currency. And what is it manufactured from? If you do have a currency in your global where, like, unless you're from a gold producing nation, a mining nation, a ore rich nation, a oil rich nation, um, or you know how to turn sands into oil uh, to rich materials, silica, or now we're going to graphene, or we're going into printing and manufacturing from computers, like. We're now printing out machines. I, I actually found something that they were talking about printing machines. So we've got to understand that these things are going to happen. Um, these countries are going to pivot off of their old coins and come to our to a, a digital standard. And you're going to have multiple games, multiple systems, multiple countries within systems like you'll have whole worlds that are inside games inside games that you'll be earning as if you're on the main game itself because you just opened up a different type of shop like again it's a different idea virtual products if you're just in music it's hey you know that bar you saw in star wars imagine the music that was playing there you themed it yourself for that bar inside a game that Disney decides to make a virtual world and have a cryptocurrency and has its own in-world currency. Like, that, that's what I mean. Like, there'll be like a Star Wars buck. And everything you buy will give you an accumulation. So the physical products you buy will give you an accumulation of more digital bucks. And in fact, they may give you higher credits for purchasing digital items. I mean, physical items. Oh, you need this? Buy this. We will give you this much in credits. Because they can self-mine it. Or mine it, uh, pre-mine it, and have it for distribution later. All right, we're going to move on. Um, here's what's next for Ethereum Polygon. Uh, I don't really look about firms. I look for what's the practicality of the software? What are their new partnerships? So I don't look for a sentiment on this stuff. We get our sentiment already. We look for the bounce points in the purple and blue lines. We know where our sentiment is. We don't need a secondary company to get that. No disrespect sentiment. I just don't need all that. What I really care about is what is the baseline value proposition on the underlying asset, right? So I'm not going to click on that. Cybersecurity in cryptocurrency, risk to be considered. Of course, it's been that way the entire time. You own your wallet. If you had a gold bar in your knapsack, who was going to protect you if everybody knew you had a gold bar in your knapsack, right? Okay, then. So be keep your stuff locked the hell up. Double redundant. Um, how will the deployment of Polkadot and Kusama auctions affect the blockchain market? I have no idea, but I can tell you smarter people than me are extremely happy. And there's this new thing, this, this Kusama auctions thing. I don't even know what this is, but evidently it's pretty damn big. So KSM Kusama it's a high price point item. I didn't even put this thing on my radar. Now I got to put it on my radar because I don't even know what this is. I don't understand it. And I need to understand it more. Just so that I can figure this out. Because evidently, with Polkadot and this doing something, evidently these things are kind of tied together. I don't know. But if you need it, homework, Polkadot and Kusama. There's something here going on. And it's big. And these guys are losing it. So I've got to study to figure it out. And maybe by next week, I'll be able to have a video for y'all. Tech giant Jack Dorsey says Square is exploring the possibility of Bitcoin hardware wallet. I believe I said this yesterday. But I, I'm telling you right now, this is the hugest thing on the planet. And nobody knows it. And you're going to hear it right now. You download a wallet. You install it on Mac. Windows, Linux, 
Android iOS, right? That means you have an app working there. The data that supports that app, that wallet is blockchain data. It hit me like a brick and I said, holy crap, the wallet is the application. The wallet's the app. It's based off blockchain data. You're just now putting screens up to the data that's there. So if I can collect the data and get it from the blockchain, and I have a blockchain app, right? So now I just need to really focus on how do I build out and how's there an easy way to build UI GUI-based data-driven wallets? Just a business thought I'm throwing out there because it hit me and I'm and I, I share everything. Just a business insight. Wallets are the apps. So with him saying this, proof. Because I said this a couple days ago. I've been saying, holy crap, I have an epiphany. Damn, the wallet is the, the wallet is the application. Crazy. So not surprising. These things I'm gonna check. I'm gonna leave everything else alone. Um I I will add this. Just because, no, I'm not, because it's Business Insider, and I don't know. It looks like Ripple files motion again, uh, asking SEC to reveal documents related to Bitcoin and XRP. Oh, that's right. That's right. If you want my documents, then whatever documents you did for these two to allow these two to run that you're stifling my ish, come at me. I'm starring that one. Get them. Pro right now, we are showing what precedence looks like. Right now, we are showing precedence. I am watching this company because, again, when everybody, when we're looking at multiples on multiples of tokens that are going to be flooding the market, all types of tokens, all types of things, we are going to then be able to see what the, what XRP actually is in reference to how they feel about these two and then see whether or not where they're going to pivot themselves to be able to conform, conform in here. And then that might turn XRP into an interesting play. So, yeah. View from Bitcoin City. 12,000 tickets. I don't know what that is. But whatever, whatever. Decrypt. What is it be? Market red. And I think... Consensus... I have nothing in uh, single board computers over here. Let me check something in business. I do have some news um, in other areas, not just there. Um, give me a second. My profile, my magazine. There we go. See more. I actually have some business stuff that I was keeping an eye on. This is important, and I wanted to pull this one out. Um, I do. I, I keep an eye on business on a lot of I uh, a lot of things. Artificial intelligence, business. You can see here on my Flipboard for the magazines, like three D printing now because of the tribe. Food technology for uh for my uh my food clients, uh and also I, I for robots getting into the food industry because I want to do robots and then you telling me food industry needs bots and okay that's what I'm saying y'all keep playing thinking that jobs are coming back like food bots I already showed y'all I'm I'm getting into that game, um strength of a nation things that are happening to uh indigenous people, uh. Brain trust, you know, because of my mom's ailment, uh, I really started studying the brain and the effects of food and and and, uh, and poisons on it, especially what we eat. Good Lord, man. You think eating organic is expensive. You don't understand the expense of 24-hour nursing. I'll just leave it at that. Food essentials, you know, our food type things. And of course, the blockchain traders. I still keep an eye on things that are happening in the trading market. 
So I was looking in the, uh, keeping in the business market, I got some business news. And what I've been complaining about when I said AWS is too expensive, it doesn't scale well for where I want to go, where I want to go when I want to look at a thousand people, I shouldn't be charged this much for bandwidth when bandwidth is coming down. When uh, processing, like you processing my website and your central server, I can get it done decentral cheaper. It's coming. I'm looking sideways at you like, uh, no, pub if you're hooked on a public cloud or AWS, Google, all of that, it could be eating a big chunk of your margins. Yeah, it's expensive. Data is expensive, of course, but not really. Not when you figure out factors on scale and what's more scale than decentralized, right? When you have machines all over the world, that's different than having a couple hundred machines in a couple states, right? Or a couple thousand machines in a couple states. Or one machine in every state, right? One big data center in every state. Still is not going to beat out millions of machines across the world. Sorry, never, right? Then, of course, the cyber attacks. Our infrastructure all over the world is horrible. And the edge computer is, uh, the edge computing is coming, edge. Edge is, when you hear edge computing, that is all the computers in homes, businesses that are gonna start popping up. The decentralized infrastructure we've been talking about, that infrastructure play of being decentralized, they have cute and clamorous terms for it. It's called the Internet of Things and Edge Computing. That's their new, that's their new cloud. It's on the edge. You'll know what it means. It means, do you have decentralized hardware and can you earn being an edge processor? Huh? Or being an edge computer, can you earn? That's where you need to be factoring your cash flow for next year when Bitcoin dives. The cycle will be over. We have Bitcoin winters. Crypto winter, excuse me. Hold on, I'm trying to zoom the heck. I'll have to go on the day, that's why. Boom, right? We have a thing called crypto winter. And in crypto winter, you're dealing with this long stretch of nothing. Long stretch. And if you're dealing with this, how are you going to make money? How are you all of the all of the all of the hype is over. All of the businesses are back. And this is a hype cycle. This is how the funding for the next generation of the infrastructure gets done this is the hype cycle we get a push we get a surge it'll go up the rest of the year we'll have our funding you get your money what are you turning that money into you buying lambos no jackass you're buying more infrastructure you're making sure you're part of the next internet You don't just go buying stupid crap. Like, this is not... Again, you're investing in an internet. Like, a new one. I'm not selling shite for the next 10 years. If I can, if I can help it. If I can help it. That's the reason why my robots earn USDT. Right here. When I'm on KuCoin. That is my reason for this. To buy this side of the trade. But if I needed to get a bill paid for the robots in the future, it's going to come out of these pairs. There's going to be like a bot fund that funds all the bots to just you compound and make only the revenue to pay all the bills for all the bots. That is your fund. Your fund is to build the money for all the bots that they can. How many, how much bots can we build per month now? 
How much does this thing build? Okay, 120. All right, now we get how much revenue? All right, good. Let's take this cash flow. And because we have a bot, a, a, a bot that just gives us cash flow for more bots, now I'm going to be able to bridge out and not have to worry about my 120s for all the bots I want to spin out. Or if I go to other exchanges and I've got to expand there and I want to put money there. It may not just to be putting bots here on BitsGap because I want to automate my scale up, right? And if I'm not, if I can get, I'm just going to keep this here because it works. And then I'm going to, now I'm focusing because I, I wrote BitsGap. I asked them, I said, hey, are y'all um, considering giving us API access so that we can actually trade? And I got basically a generic answer. Hey, you know, you have 15 pairs. You should trade up to 15 pairs. Like, I know I got 15 pairs, dude. That's not what I'm asking you. I want to be able for it to move down. Well, try our futures. You have a bubble. I'm like, no, you only have futures on Binance and I'm in America. Like, I wish you would just look at my account and see what I'm talking about. Like, no, I can't do that. I can't use your down feature and we can't follow down and you don't pre-do that for us. So since you don't automate that, can I automate it? Give me ABI access. Oh, no, we're not doing that. Well, I'll go find another grid bot. Like, I'll go find another one. I'll keep using you because you make money. So, so, let's not get it twisted. I'm not saying I'm not going to use it or nor tell you not to use it. No, I'm using it. And they'll hear my videos in which I'm saying, hey, I'm starting to work on this video because they're not doing this over there. And I bet you they change. I bet you show a shite they will. Like, I don't I don't have time to play. Like we don't have like the way I treat this, like treat these dudes and treat these businesses. I treat them like how we treat the same energy we treat our, each other when we feel disrespected. I treat them. The same damn way, except I treat them that way and I keep it off my brothers and sisters. Because I feel they affect us way more because they want us to pay for inadequate ish. And I'm like, look, if I'm giving you money, if I'm telling you something that's going to make you money and you don't want to listen, Pirates of Silicon Valley, Bill Gates told Steve Jobs, hey, did you ever think about just franchising this and like letting people license it? For other, you know, machines? Steve Jobs said, no, we're never going to do that because our stuff is better. Okay, no, we're, we're going to keep it. Well, he's like, you really should. You should think about it. That man warned him what he was about to do. Steve Jobs decided he didn't want to do it. Well, guess what? Microsoft was born with Windows. It was already there, but Microsoft was born with Windows and the, the they got them on Chinese computers and they were pirated everywhere. He pirated himself for a surge in visibility. You know who else did that? Adobe did it to Photoshop. Pirated themselves to be able to get the visibility. That's why I say that we don't understand how uh, how pirate uh, how much of a society of pirates we actually live in. We really don't understand it. We don't grasp how much of a pirate society we live in. That's why I harp on pirates of Silicon Valley. I harp on you thinking about getting some type of trading bot up. It's on y'all whether or not you decide to begin to earn or put you, making sure you're putting yourself in interest payments. You know, from Coinbase. Getting those interest payments in. I don't care what you do. If you don't want to do bots, that's fine. The reason why I harp on that because there's people that have been telling me for months. Oh, I can't wait till you put the bot class out. I can't wait to be earning the interest you're earning. Okay. Well, bot class done. How many of y'all got bots?
Am I, why aren't you putting up your results? Why aren't you talking it up? Why aren't you putting out your test results? You see my test results? I, I show my numbers all the time. If every time I click on something, you see it right here on the right side. You see what pair I'm in. You see exactly what I'm doing as far as the, the calculations I did. Or whether or not it was a bad freaking calculation because it's not in the evens. And how the hell did that happen? Or now that I'm adjusting for this 298 window, how was that doing? Less trades, 0 0.68, uh, 6.68, 0.64% uh, daily. Well, we really don't know much because it's only really been running a day. 0 0.87, 0 0.88, 0 0.91, 0 0.51. Can we maximize these so that this percentage isn't based on a pump happening to get that percentage up? That these are just the average day rates. And if I can then get my other bots going, my thing is, is I want to build automated interest. And when I get automated interest and I can consistently pull automated interest and I can, you know, I'm not saying that this is going to be your interest forever, man. I'm just saying that, come on, come on, come on. Are you serious right now? To do what they're doing, you gotta understand something. This is what happens on the stock market. This is what they're doing on the market. Are you trading bots on the market? Do you have pairs in currency markets on foreign exchange? Forex, the foreign exchange. Same ideals. You see, do you get why they're so happy about crypto now? Because how they've been able to make money on those other foreign exchanges, foreign exchanges, it means whatever selling on an exchange that's foreign and is important in their country. Commodities that they sell. What fruits and vegetables to the world markets, right? Platinum, palladium, copper, gold, silver, iron, wheat. All of these things. Hold on. I've got a lag. In. Okay, here we go. All of these things are what they do market makers for. Or you could be a market maker on the stock market by offering liquidity and making money on the trading pairs. Like, literally, I am slowly but surely waiting for the market to pivot my way. Do I think that traditional markets are going to come this direction? Or do I think we're going to go more into their old antiquated direction. Which way do I think is going to go? And again, look at the seven day percentage. We have got to see the change in our business model. We have got to see the change on our investments. We have got to see them. Do I think the stock market will give me something like this soon? Will the market be traded in crypto and be in a zone for these robots to play with those physical assets in a digital space? Can this just be the new new? Can companies who figure out how to earn interest on their own be viable companies because they not only can make and manufacture their own products, they offer their own services, they have their own digital content, but especially they can earn interest on all of those things on top? Who's more in position to do that? Now you understand why we have Toxic Hustle Media. All types of media, hard media, you know, billboards are media, television still media, a YouTube ad is media, a Facebook ad is media, 
How do I pay for those digital media ads? I pay for it with digital assets. Can I convert my ad money into fiat to make a purchase? Yes, but I'm not going to. You know what I'm going to end up doing? I'm going to wait till I get my Coinbase card, like all of you are. And then once I have my business, which is already there, it's called Tata Hustle. And then once I have that tied together, I'll make these purchases directly through the card. Shoring up that it's a business expense. This is your hustles for digital. Your digital world. Your digital businesses, your digital assets need digital funding, digital interest. These banks will need to either be better than you at making percentages or continue to want a half ass crap saying that, well, we're going to have to give you a lower percentage because we're taking on the higher risk tolerance. So. What? You mean you spread the risk between multiple exchanges? And then you choose that risk-based scoff of what if you're investing into actual physical things that matter or not. Or whether or not you're playing more speculative to speculative plays in which you lose more than you win. But when you win, you win big. No, I'd rather be consistent. Like, you know, how banks were supposed to run. We were never supposed to be hedging on weirdo-ish. Banks were always supposed to be fundamentally sound with the money of the people that were trusting them with their money. You weren't supposed to be calculating on some weirdo mathematician's weirdo calculation on a bunch of weirdo things mixed together. No, you're supposed to have sound business investments. And as those business make money, the bank made money off of choosing to invest in businesses. We're now have been investing in weirdo. And all of all of these accounts, these retirement accounts are stacked with paper mache weirdo calculations. I can't say it enough that I have this innate risk that I'm dealing with. Because somebody's pension is tied to paper that can crash at any damn time because there's no economy to support it. And they're not moving her into the digital space. No, they're keeping her into to paper mache weirdo. So I, like I say, when I say I have skin in this game on the other side of these trades, yeah, the, the pension side of these trades that are going to get destroyed in the next couple of years. Like, I don't say that cute and glamorous. I got 24-hour nursing to try to pay for. That ain't a joke. That's real life. And these people out here are playing with your money and playing with your time and playing with your spirit because you're chasing false news, false narratives. What they don't want you to know is that the entire economy has changed. Right? If I go into my feed for my your business, right? If I go in here, this is what Leo has found. Pre-pandemic habits leave behind, uh, to leave behind, uh, let's see. The stop, okay, so how to get, we're dealing with how to get back to schools, to get back to work. People are already pushing back to not wanting to go back to work. Workers rage quitting their jobs as tightening labor market forces employees to take a, take note of unfavorable conditions and low pay. People are rage quitting because they're getting they want to, they have to get paid lower. Like I've been saying that this economy is pressed too high. I've been saying it for years, and my friends know it. I've been saying like I don't even know how they're paying fifty thousand dollars for half of this crap anymore. We don't make enough money in this business to support all these salaries. It's too top heavy. It's like a, a baby with a big head and little feet. 
That's the corporate structure of, of, of every corporation in the world. All these CEOs and the executive boards that do nothing but want meetings all day. To then have more meetings about meetings. Let's get ready for this meeting. So let's prepare meetings to have meetings to have meetings. But nobody's making money. Not one of them are actually physically out there really getting a next client to justify their damn bill of whatever their salary is over in the 100K zone. And who suffers is the lower paid salary people. Because what they do is, well, yeah, now it's like, okay, well, we're going to intern you. We're going to give you a lower rate, right? So you get an internship. You're there for like low money. You're doing like 30, 40,000 a year, right? So now they got you at the low. Then they hire you. And then they hire you at base low, right? Junior rate. Because they got you at intern rate rather than you coming in because you had the skill set already at senior rate as a, or and or even in a uh, lead developer or even a uh a, a, a senior right you come in as junior developer instead of a, a developer or lead developer right and that's the hustle it's it's how they hustle your 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 paycheck when you go into these offices just because you get out of the street the hustle continues. Just because you get into the boardroom, the hustle continues. Just because you end up in a freaking cell, the hustle continues. There's politics in every single one of those areas. There's a way and a methodology that you got to live by in every single one of those zones. But what hasn't changed for us, is understanding we've already always been at the lowest end of those zones. And we've had to be able to fight our way through. The difference is you need to start fighting it with your mind, not your hands or your skill set. You ain't going to stand up long enough to fix this. You ain't got enough hands to cook your way out of this one. Right? You can't, you ain't got enough, uh, uh, enough, uh, uh, a, a, a back support to drive the amount of hours you got for a week to be able to get through this gig economy. We're going into the micro transactional economy. And if you are not thinking in scale, you are doomed to fail. I'm not even trying to rhyme. I'm serious. I'm so sincere. I'm so sincere. For real. Like, if you are not thinking at scale, if you're not thinking on passive streams, I don't know what you're going to do. I don't know how to help you. Because who's going to have a job for you? Are you programming robots? Do you know how to train robots? Or do they have to train you to train robots? Or are they just going to leapfrog and hire the person that spent time fixing their own robots. And since they fix their own robots, they kind of know how to fix the ones that they're doing because it's like, oh, that's what you have? Okay, yeah, I know that. I know the system. I know what software you're running. Okay, yeah, no problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No problem. I can fix that. That's, that, that, that's how I got into web. That's how I got into the web. I started making my own websites, designing them for myself, and some of my friends and a couple of clients here and there, put them in a portfolio and got a job. Then I learned WordPress. I designed a couple WordPress sites for myself and for a couple friends and for some clients and got a job. <laughs> Do you see the routine? When I was a graphic designer, I learned Photoshop. I designed some graphics for some friends and some clients. I put it in a portfolio and I got a job. The portfolio is called LinkedIn. How you send out the net to cast to get people to get your LinkedIn page is to put your portfolio or your information, the keywords that you have in a site called like Indeed, a job site. And now that those keywords, SEO type things, 
are in there, you get a job based off of the keywords if they're looking for it. So how you reverse engineering? Go look at all the job applications that have keywords that you are that are in your resume. And software should be your major keywords. Photoshop, Excel, Word, PowerPoint, Azure 360, Amazon AWS, WordPress, PHP, if you know how to code PHP, JavaScript, if you know how to write JavaScript. You don't think you'll get jobs for people looking for coders? Or do you think that maybe if you take your skill set and find some companies that are already out here with cryptocurrencies and offer your skills in their Discord, you don't think you'll get money that way too? I've been in Discords for companies. I'm in Discords for companies all the time. I've got a list of Discords that I'm following that are just dealing with the things that are going to be interesting for my build, my business. And I, as they, I start looking at their discords, I start finding ways that I'll potentially, that I might see opportunities to manufacture or buy land or whatever it is. I'm looking for the hot game right now. Don't get me wrong. Decentraland is cool, but I'm looking for like a game that's going to be like Halo type beats. That's going to have an engine like that and that I can really design some dope ass clothes. I mean, they still look like Legoland a little bit. So I'm I'm kind of I'm cool on that. That's Second Life for version 1. I'm I'm good. I know they'll they can upgrade their engine in the future. When they have a better engine, I'll spend more time. I, I got the coin. I respect them. Don't get it twisted. I mean, look. I have it in the long-term portfolio and I'm trading on it to earn interest on the side. So I believe in it. But I want a game that I can actually sell some real dope 3D gear. And that's what you have to look at for your businesses. But just understand that the, the data that I'm seeing is that jobs are going to get tighter. Is the stock market accurately val val valuing your company? Like, really? Is it really valuing your company? Is it overvaluing you? Like, there's so many companies that they cannot do the earnings they say they're going to do in the next five years. Like, it's ridiculous where earnings are right now that they have to do. And come, there's going to be a collapse within the next two years because they can't meet these earnings and they're missing earnings consistently. And their prices will get adjusted. We will have a stock adjustment, a correction. We will get a correction in the stock market. Hands down, it has to happen. That's why I'm pivoting because we have our corrections. We already had a major correction in Bitcoin and we'll have it again next year and there'll be a long, cold winter. That's fine. So in business, just know wages are fastest rate since the 1980s. Uh, 1980s. Yeah, yeah, fast food places. Be, and they're doing that because they're priming it for ro robotics go in there and you're going to be doing robotics. Now imagine that. You're now a robotic engineer working for $15 an hour or maybe even $17 an hour. You see the jugs? The salary will go up. What you'll do will go up, but you're just a placeholder for when they don't need you to stock the, the bots no more. They, you're just going to buy a ghost kitchen McDonald's. I mean, people will maybe drive to a drive through If there's another, if there's enough vehicles that can deliver hot McDonald's food via robot to your door and it just drops hot, crispy fries to your door and there's still hot and crispy fries at your door, do you think you're going to get out to drive all the way there to bring it all the way home to have soggy fries? Especially if you're not sitting in McDonald's to eat it. No. You're going to opt for the McDonald's mobile that delivers hot, crispy fries to your door. You don't think that they can put a fryer in a little machine and then just have it roaming around like roaming fries? <laughs> roaming burgers? 
fried up and served to you, hey, I want a McDonald's burger. Okay, well, by the time it ding the McDonald's is at your door, you, you it just got it just got finished getting served to you. Like, we've got to see that there's a potential of roaming delivery in fast food that's going to happen. Automated because it can go back to the place, it can get sanitized, it can get refilled, restocked, and go back into a neighborhood like the ice cream man and deliver McDonald's burgers or whatever. I see it coming. Jobs report shows improvement, but not strong enough to get Fed talking about ta uh, tapering. No, they're not going to do anything. Because the minute they do, the market goes immediately the opposite direction. United Airlines is buying supersonic jets, New York to London in 3.5 hours. I just said something about getting to California in three hours, right? Because, you know, you can't. they don't have a tunnel for that yet. Because when those tunnels start going in New York, that's going to be the, 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 the model. They say, I can get to California in three hours. I better get to London in three hours. Boom. There you go. This wacky. Da, 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 da. This is a struggle to find workers and experts are raising the alarm over labor shortage. Automation is going to remove that problem. Truck drivers, cab drivers, or Uber, Lyft. Uh, slash uh, Uber and Lyft drivers, all that's going to be automated. Uh, flying is going to be automated. Uh, trucks are going to be automated. Forklifts are automated. Warehouses is already automated with Amazon. Uh, Amazon makes their own box with robots. Uh, let's see. I guess you can go say the supermarket's automated, especially since my grocery store just threw up some more self checkout lines. Um, plus, you got delivery, right? And then you've got the shopping delivery. So that'll be automated. So when you get fresh, like, seafood to your door and the, the fish is still flapping, you're going to go to the supermarket that you have to worry about why it has that real, real crazy smell? Or do you want the fish that's still flapping? See what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. I'm saying that we've got to look at the potential for technology to disrupt Everything that we're doing and those inter and this internet of things, who do we think is the company that is the transactions that happen? Who is the company that's running all the transactions for all the robots that McDonald's got? Who's gonna be the company that runs for all the the robots that are that are gonna be in the the chain that's that whatever, whatever chain that comes out, that's another robot, like the pizza chain, right? That here comes these, these fleets of open source software that are mandated and maintained and, and peer reviewed and everything. And they're better for the robots and work better and more efficiently and do more things. You get more things you can do with your bots. Like as soon as there's like a, a big shop, a fi, a bot Shopify, done deal. As soon as there's a robotic kitchen Shopify, done deal. You can download all these skill sets for your robots and you, depending on the type of robot you got, the, that robot, you can upgrade it to do specific things in your kitchen and or in your warehouse and or. Come on, man. Manufacturing clothing or printing or whatever. Come on, man. Manufacturing is going to change. Manufacturing will be back in America, but are you the manufacturer and what are you manufacturing? What are you selling? Or are you still a consumer? To be a manufacturing con country, well, we need to be manufacturing items. When does it start? What, do you think it's going to start when you get back into a place to manufacture for somebody when the computers can manufacture for the company already? Print it itself? Come on, let's 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 invest in our future as if we're thinking for how the future already looks like it's gonna roll out. Meet George Jetson. The Jetsons. You talk to an AI, AI delivers what you want. The Jetsons. If you go to a job, the building was empty, one person was there. Seem familiar? Because that's where the main centralized computers are, but Every home had their own CPUs and computer systems and robots, automation. 
They were living above ground. We never got to really see the ground. Right? So this is what we got to look at and how life, our life is currently and how it's going to flip. And, say, and you can say, okay, do I, what's Occam's razor, right? Occam's razor is the easiest path is typically the best one to choose, right? It's the simplest thing. Choose the simplest path. It's choose usually is going to be the best one. Do we think we're going to get back to work, or do we think, or is it easier to say that robots will just take up the jobs? Do we think we're going to have more unions or less unions if humans are working? If we have more unions, does that create more stress or less stress on a business? Do you think the business is going to take the path of more stress or the path of less stress? Okay. So if we know that and we know the if we know the jugs, then let's prepare our investments the same way. Let's buy into institutions and, and businesses that are going to support our businesses. Buy even just the happenstance of the technology is just enough for us to do business with it. And the good thing is about the technology that we're currently working in, this crypto technology that we're dealing with, is that the fact that soon. If we don't like the way that they're doing business, then you just fork the software, spin up your own machines, and do it yourself. Now, I do need to do one more thing on trading, but I don't think I'm going to do any more trades today. The only trades I'm going to end up doing is the one I told you about. I believe that Bitcoin may be seeing its bottom. I don't know, but I want to put a position in now in case Monday we have a run, and I don't want FOMO. And having missed a five to ten percent, or even a two to five percent rally, just I just don't want to. So I'm going to be looking at the portfolio to make um, some investments long term into BTC, um, so that I can um, kind of catch this sale January price. That's just me, not a financial advice. Please consult a financial advisor or become your own. I guess you know. You need to be on who's going to really advise you. What financial advisor could you even go to in this field? You know, it's stupid that we have to say this stuff, but you also got to protect yourself because we're talking about something that everybody wants to throw under the rug. We're dealing with digital economy, digital economy. We're dealing with a change in the digital economy that now it's expanding, not consolidating. And with that digital economy, you're earning to support the digital system. It's felt weird for years that I worked less harder than a lot of my constituents, my friends, who are working on their feet, and I'm sitting on my butt, and I'm realizing I was sitting on my butt, but I was making more money sitting on my butt. But there's always pain that comes from that, and you lose your back. Your back gets hurt. You start having um, spine problems. So you got to stand up. Then you start getting leg problems, knee problems. Because you're pacing. Thing is, is that no matter what you do, there's always going to be some cause and effect to everything you're doing. When I was a graphic designer, we had the mouse that you move with the hand. Now my, you know, now you, your wrist clicks. <laughs> you know, that's just how things are with, with what we're dealing with. But I can tell you right now, from dealing with the hardware I can tell you that carpal tunnel is a real thing from the mouse. Thumb from playing heavy, like the 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 injuries you get from sports related injuries that you get from um from playing video games is real. People have sports injuries and have to retire because these controllers, these things. No, in the future, we're going to just program AI to do all the things that we don't want to do no more. Program the AI to play the game better than us. Program our AI to assist us as we play. You do this while I do that. You concentrate on these controls while I concentrate on these controls. Right? AI-assisted gaming will be the next venue and revolution. How we choose to see how blockchain technology will fund it and in all these endeavors and all these virtual kingdoms that will be created, understand that now we're going into sub layer. 
You're not going to be looking for the next social network. You're not going to be looking externally for some external thing. Like, what is Bitcoin? You can't see Bitcoin. Bitcoin is not a social network. Right? We're not, you're, this is not something you're going to just see. And they say the revolution is not going to be televised. I do want to take a quick look at yesterday's number and see if we got any stability in the market. And no, I see we've still been selling off. All right, let me go into the 10K. 10K has gone back up. Yep, so we do have the 10K wallets jumping back in. The one, the, the one K wallets, wallets that have 1,000 Bitcoin in them uh, are going up. 100 wa Bitcoin wallets are going down. The 10 Bitcoin wallets are going down. The 1 Bitcoin wallets are going down. The 0.1 Bitcoin wallets are still going down. And the 0.01 wallets are going down. Still going down. So we see everybody's moving money out of BTC, potentially not having a sell-off, right? No real news for a sell-off, right? What does that now tell us? Accumulation. And with accumulation, that means that they moved to other coins. We are looking at an alt pump that will then potentially Bitcoin bump this above that 200 day moving average that we need to signal that we're back on the bit on the bull and we've done this before again we this has happened in the past i'm not going to go all the way back down to the the to back in 2017 but that happened back in 2017 where we fell underneath but then bounced right back over so we can easily bounce back up above these 200 uh, the 200 moving average because the news will suffice enough to keep us going, especially with Ethereum, Cardano, and everybody else getting ready to play um, as far as having their, their news. Uh, let's see. Yep, so I'm going to also now just quickly look at the ETH wallets. I'm starting to begin to do that a little bit just to see if we see any ETH going in, and I really, the number of addresses is going down on that. How about staking? Are more people staking? We're flattening out, so we could be seeing people pooling in to begin to stake. Dropping, dropping. 100 is dropping. You know why I'm not surprised? Because if I'm in the 10 Bitcoin wallets, yeah. I'm not going to be trying to stack heavy, heavy, heavy unless I'm trying to get my 32 ETH. So this wallet address is what we're going to be watching for when this goes back up because we've been going down, going down, going down. And um, what this is, is what is the balance necessary for a wallet to be turned on for staking is ETH. You need 32 ETH. To stake on your own so that being the case we're going to keep an eye on that metric that's why i say when we see bitcoin going down now and we don't see no heavy sell-off well i'm looking to see all right i'm not i'm saying no, all these wallets are going down yes all the, these wallets are going down yeah these wallets are going down because the 10k wallets are rising why because those wallets are starting to pull into so i expect the one to go up I expect the 0.01 to go up, and I expect the 0.01 to... That's actually gone down a little bit. Addresses with non-zero balance are in a slight decline, but it looks to be stabling out. So, again, I see addresses jumping into there. Um, I don't know any about anything about these other things, the Binance, DAOs, the stable coins. I really don't care about none of that. I'd really care about these two things right now, Bitcoin and Ethereum. So I am going to go ahead and shut this down. We are pretty much over, way over, but I, I just wanted to show you. I'll let you know what I'm going to do with the bots. I, I'm pretty much not going to be doing anything. I'm just going to be kind of uh, accumulating some BTC 
on my own. I don't. I, I suggest you do your own due diligence to make sure if that's a play that you'll be making, or if you're gonna. Um, I'm I'm following uh Robert Kiyosaki. He said he's in accumulation mode. I am too. I am too. I'm looking at deals that are half off right now. So um, just not BTC. Look at also the alts that you think can really pump and 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 really do stuff for your portfolio. Make sure that you, what is your business? What is your business for the next couple of years? At least two years, right? For two years, like next year, what kind of business can you launch with the extra cash flow you may have? And did you structure it right now? So if I'm in music, where is music going to potentially be stored or who are the biggest storage facilities that are coming online in cryptocurrency? And uh, do they have anybody in music? Like, that's why I do all the things that I'm doing, like showing you how I work, because I want you to do this on your own. Start doing your own research studies and start coming up with your own things that you see. And then you can share that with the tribe. The Discord link is in the link below and go to the Cash Lane group. If you're finding this and you don't know what I'm talking about, we have in the Musical Geniuses Discord, link in the description below, we have in the entertainment section, because it is entertainment, we have the Discord. And in here, I talk about bots, or I talk about crypto, and we have guys that talk about stock. Or you can talk about what you see in, in, in these streets to earn commerce, right? It's about how do you see earning commerce? It's a cash lane. So join us in the cash lane if you aren't a part of the tribe. Um, you know, we welcome everyone just, you know, we are smart Alex and you come in there wrong, we will smash on you. And it's musical geniuses. You know, we are producers and entertainers and musicians. And, and this is another way that we're looking to expand how we generate our revenue in the future. All right. So I hope everyone's doing well. I, I want to get into a creative space soon so I can actually start making some music and I'll actually do some beats. Uh, so I actually make some, some, some dope stuff. And I'm going to sit down. I'm going to lay out some files. I got some files. I got some heats. <laughs> right? So I want to be able to do my, um, my, you know, do some cook-ups and let y'all see how I cook up. Um, once I can get a, a workflow that I can actually cook up in not in eight hours. And I can cook up in like an hour or two hours and cool. And that's like one song. Because like my cook up, like, I, I cook up like whole damn songs. So... It would be like me recording a song for like my album or something like that. So I want to get to that place. I'm coming up with a workflow now so I can actually do kind of cookups for albums where you can see how I can build the structure of a song. And then from there, how I then take that kind of skeleton structure and build on top of it. And in the future, I actually want to be able to like get session musicians and pay for session musicians and then be able to have those session musicians get paid for working with me on music that gets released rather than paying you up front, we can pay on the dividends, right? The session musicians typically don't get paid in the industry for like creating and crafting these hits. And I told y'all from watching Standing in the Shadows of Motown when I found out that Hitsville, USA, the Motown sound, that most of those you know, those guys that were the, 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 uh, the musicians on that music were dying broke and you know had drug problems and all that. And then I look at hip hop and see all, all my heroes, you know, dying off and I ain't got no health care. I'm like, yo, see, we got to look out for ourselves and we got to look out for our families. We got to look out and, and, and think about this and, and even this music industry different. Like, think about that. We've got to look at this music industry different and think about how we build financial structures off of our content. And, and earning interest on that. Right? Building hardware. Coming up with software, designing robots, whether it be desktop machines or even robotic equipment that you're buying. Because like I said, Alibaba got two grand. And you can practice with them. They got the plastic bots cheaper than that on AliExpress that you can buy practice bots. That's what I'm going to be getting some practice bots up. Like I said, I'll be putting all of this stuff out so that cats can start getting their 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 their, their skill sets together for the next revolution of jobs and those jobs might be decentralized businesses you know dow type things so i just want to get y'all prepared 
you know, mentally. We are, we are, we, this is a mental change. We got, we got to switch up our mental jugs from jobs, the old job market, to figure out skill sets, make sure those skill sets are in the next five to 10 years gig economies, and then pivot yourself to gig economies at scale. Not gig economies that got you working 18 hours looking stupid in 20 years, right? That you're still working 18, 20 hours, and that ain't the move. Automation's the move. How many robotic or automation systems are you building out while you're earning 10 to 11% interest? Because when it drops down to 1% interest, they're going to be looking for new ways to grow. So start growing your hardware. Start looking and doing your research. Start looking into single board computers. Start looking up Raspberry Pi. Start looking into Linux. Start learning. This is Jay Tragic Jeffrey, the Chief Strategy Officer for Toxic Hustle for Crypto Plunder Live. And y'all stay safe. I'll holler at y'all tomorrow. Peace out.